Shalom, shalom everybody. This is the Jewish Bible Man. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy New Year. I hope it's a fantastic 2021 and uh, hoping we can put COVID-19 behind us. That's my prayer. Uh, today I want to address an issue that has uh, been on my heart. I, I think it's become a prevalent issue within, within the church. I'm not going to say every church, but I think it's a big enough issue where enough people are, uh, are following this kind of teaching or this kind of direction. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, Jesus said this, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, in your name cast out demons, in your name perform miracles? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Today, I just want to talk about it. Uh, I want to introduce you to the, to the doctrinal aspect at a later post. But let me first by saying this. Uh, it is difficult for people to, to, to hear the biblical doctrine of soteriology or salvation because they've never really been introduced to it. I'm not going to say that no one's been introduced to it. I'm not going to say that uh, many churches are not teaching truth because that would be not incorrect for me to say. But I'm going to say that in mainstream America, there is... Uh, an approach to salvation that is not biblical. Uh, so let me talk to you about that. First of all, w salvation is by not by works. It's all by grace. It's all through faith. It's all by Jesus Christ. It's all the work that God does in someone's heart. But I will say this. A salvation that does not produce a changed life is not salvation at all. And we have done this, we have told many people, not me personally, but in, in within the church arena, many churches have told people, because you walked in altar, because you decided to receive Jesus Christ, because you made a prayer, a profession, you're saved. And don't let anyone tell you different. It doesn't matter what you look, believe or live like. It doesn't matter that you obey or not obey. It doesn't matter that you have don't exhibit any change in your life. You just live the way you've always lived. But because you made this prayer, you're saved. That's false. I know a lot of people, I know some people that have made professions like that and are saved. But I know a lot of people who have made professions like that and are not saved. I have not met anyone who's genuinely saved who won't go out and tell people about Jesus. But I've met a lot of people that make a profession or a prayer and tell no one and don't even live right. And the church has done a good job, not every church, but many churches have done a good job of telling these people that they're saved, that they're going to be in the kingdom of God because they made this profession. That's false, absolutely false. You need to, Jesus said, you need to obey and believe and follow. Those are the criteria of salvation, not a sinner's prayer. Jesus never prayed a sinner's prayer with anyone as far as I know. The apostles have never prayed a sinner's prayer as far as I know in Scripture. They never said Jesus didn't meet someone and say to him, uh, how do I receive eternal life? Let me tell you how to receive eternal life. Make a prayer with me right now. I want to receive you in my life as Savior. Old Testament, they never said let's receive God. Uh, New Testament, well, Jesus is God, and Jesus never said, now receive me into your heart. Uh, that's not a biblical doctrine. A biblical doctrine is to turn from your sin and to embrace Jesus Christ as your Savior and follow him and repent every time you sin. You never stop repenting. You're not saved by works. You're not saved because of what you do but you're saved unto good works. That's not me making that up. That's Ephesians 2.10, right? For we are created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are saved unto those works. You are saved by grace, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, but you are saved unto good works in Ephesians 2.10, right? A continuation of that same passage, right? So we turn away from something, repent, and then we turn to something. We repent unto something, right? And so if someone comes and makes a profession, that, that doesn't in any way indicate that they're saved. What indicates that you're saved is that you love God, you want to follow God, you're a changed person, you have a changed heart, you have been changed. That is what the issue is. Lehitrot, everybody. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like.